Well, hello, Pray and Chair Warriors. I am sorry that I'm late. I went and made me some coffee. Because I am sleepy this afternoon. Spent a lot of time in front of a computer today and it just makes me sleepy sometimes. Well, what I want to talk to you tonight about is salvation uh, through Jesus Christ. That is the only way. It's the only way is through Jesus Christ. So I wanted to look up some scriptures tonight. I didn't have a chance to do a music share today, so there's nothing out there for me to read, but that's okay because I'm kind of sleepy anyway. I may not be on here for very long. I'm going to do, we're going to look up some scriptures. I'm going to do a salvation message, and I think that's it. I have me some decaf coffee. I was so sleepy. Maybe just drinking it will keep me awake. Alright, I hope you had an awesome day today. I did. I got everything done that I needed to get done today. Tomorrow's another day that I'm going to work on something else. I'm going to work on learning the script that I need to know for Thursday to do the presentation. So I'm here tonight. I won't be here tomorrow night. Possibly will not be here on Thursday night either. Um, I don't know. We shall see. Anyway, um, I'm going to jump into some prayer. God, we just thank you. We thank you, God, that you are on your throne and you are in control. We thank you that you love us, God. You loved us enough to send your son to die for us, to offer us that salvation that everyone needs, God. We thank you that you are the great I am. You are the great Jehovah. You are our creator, our sustainer, our provider, our protector. You are our shelter in the storm, and you are our strength and our refuge. God, we pray for... Um, we thank you because you are mighty and magnificent and powerful, God. You are the righteous judge that will judge all unrighteousness, but yet you are loving and kind and compassionate. You're forgiving, you're faithful, God, and you're patient. You want none to perish, God. Thank you for loving us as your children. Thank you for calling us as your children. Uh, we love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. Oh, I'm having some drainage problems here. Excuse me. Um, God, we cry out for the lost. We just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so that they could be saved. We pray for the prodigals to come home, God, for them to just see where they are, for them to return and repent, and let you reconcile that relationship and make it just as good as new. We pray, God, for Florida as this um, tropical storm has turned into a hurricane, God. And now they're under a hurricane warning, God. We just pray that you would be with these people, God. That you would just protect them. That you would have them be prepared. That you would have them be in safe places, God that you would just put your hand of protection over them. They have been through so much, God. More bodies were found today, God, that will at least bring some, um, some knowing to some of the families that have been missing their loved ones. God, that they know where they are and they're not having to wonder. Um, we just pray for these families, God. We just pray that you would give them peace, comfort, and strength. We pray for all the government officials, God, that you would be with them. We pray for the rescuers, God, that you would keep them safe, that you would, uh, God, bless them for the work that they're doing, that you would bless them, God. God, we just pray for all the volunteers also. In so many different areas, God, we pray for them too. We praise you for them. We just pray that people have experienced the hands and feet of Jesus. 
God, we pray for others that have lost loved ones. We just pray that you would give them peace, comfort, and strength. We pray for all the sick, God. We just pray that you would heal their bodies. Just let them be stronger every day, more and more. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, all right, my Pray and Share Warriors. Allergies are just so nasty right now. Sometimes I go to bed with a headache. And I do take things, but I don't want to take something all day long. Not unless I'm having a full-blown allergy attack where my nose is running and my eyes running and I can't control it. Okay, let's look in Psalms. Psalms 3.8 says this. I think we'll just read all of it. This is a Psalm of David. There's only eight verses. Lord, how are they increased that trouble me? Many are they that rise up against me. Many there be which say of my soul, There is no help for him in God. Selah. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory, in the lifter up of mine head. I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy hill. Selah. I laid me down and slept. I awaked, for the Lord sustained, sustained me. I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that have set themselves against me round about. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God, for thou hast smitten all mine enemies upon the cheekbone. Thou hast broken the teeth of the ungodly. Salvation belongeth unto the Lord. Thy blessing is upon thy people. Salvation belongeth to the Lord. So we can only get salvation through Jesus. He is the only way. I like David's Psalms. They're so good. Psalms 37 9. I don't know whether this is a King David one or not. Oh, it is. 37 9. For evil doers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. Yeah, that's 37.9. Oops. I don't know why that does that. That is 37.9. I thought it said something about salvation. You know, sometimes if you look up a different, um, a different version, you get a different word. So we shall inherit the earth. The evildoers shall be cut off. And that is going to come to pass. It will come to pass. The evil, the evil will be reckoned with unless, unless they repent and unless they turn away from their evil ways. I'm not saying that no, there are people that are beyond redemption because I don't know that. I don't know that, so I'm not going to say that. Okay, well, let's look up uh, John 6.44. No man come to me except the Father which hath sent me. Draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. So no man come to even Jesus unless the Father draws them to Jesus. 
So we can't just, we have to be drawn by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is who draws us to Jesus. So no man comes to Jesus except the no man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him. So we have to be drawn by God to Jesus. So let's read Acts 4.12. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. So there is only one name, and that name is Jesus. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which is become the head of the corner. So Jesus is the cornerstone. Jesus is also the salvation, that, I mean the, the foundation that we need to be building our lives on. I have my Take This World and Give Me Jesus t-shirt on. Building 429. I love building 429. Okay, so let's read one more. Then we're going to look up some of the scriptures that are on this salvation invitation. I usually just read them. I'm going to look them up in the scripture. Okay. The last one is going to be Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of work, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. So, salvation is a free gift. We can't buy it. We can't be good enough for it. It is a free gift. It was a gift that was freely given. And it's a free gift for us to receive. Okay, well that is all the scriptures on there. This is kind of like the Romans road. And so a lot of it is in Romans. Hmm. Most of it is in Romans. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, this is better on this side. Okay, because it's in order. Romans 3, 10. So Romans 3, 10 says that as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. So none of us are righteous. So when we come to Jesus, we are not righteous. We are not. In Romans 3, 23, over on the next page, I'm going to read 22 also. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. And uh, Romans 5, 8. But God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He did. He died for us. Uh, Romans 6.23 For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And 
And so then John 14, 6, John 14, 6, John 14, 6 says, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also, and from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. Okay, then back to Romans. Flipping back and forth. Sorry, my eye itches. Back to Romans. Romans 10, 9 through 11 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth that the Lord, the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believe on him, believeth on him, shall not be ashamed. So if we believe on Jesus, we are not ashamed. Okay, let's see. There's one more. 10, 13, Romans 10, 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So all we have to do is call upon the name of the Lord and we will be saved. It's not hard. People make it really hard. And they think that on their own strength, they can clean up their life. They cannot. They need to come as they are. Jesus wants us as we are. He doesn't want us to go and work on our lives and fail at trying to clean up our lives when he can do it supernaturally. He can remove the desires that we have that are sin. He can replace them with other things that are so much better for us. We have to trust him. We have to accept salvation through Jesus Christ. That is what we have to do. We must do that. It is the best decision of your life that you can make is accepting Jesus as your Savior. I accepted Jesus when I was 31. And I am now 61. So I have only been a Christian for 30 years. This year in May, May 14th, 91, was my date that I got saved. And um, I've been a Christian for 30 years now. I still do not know everything there is to know about the Bible. I have read the Bible cover to cover twice. Started it again on, a, on the third time, but because of what happened while I was reading it through the second time, um, I kind of chickened out. But salvation is the most important decision that you can make in your life and it does it does um, determine where you spend eternity we're going to spend eternity in one of two places we're going to spend eternity in heaven with God, Jesus and the Holy Spirit or we're going to spend eternity in hell with Satan and all of his demons. Oh, you have the angels too in heaven. So I prefer heaven. I know a lot of people that are in heaven that I want to see again. So I prefer heaven. When I decided to get saved, it was quite a decision because I could have gone back to how I used to do in my past. I already knew what was there, but I was at a crossroads and I needed to make a decision. And my decision also 
was going to impact my daughter. And so I chose, she was only six, so I chose God. I chose Jesus. I chose the Holy Spirit. I chose the direction that I had been brought up in, but I had strayed away. Many of us do. We stray away from what we know is right. You can always come back. You can always come back. And if you have been saved and you have strayed away, then all you have to do is ask for forgiveness and ask for strength. And you are already back. And start walking in the ways of God and start uh, walking with Jesus. But if you've never accepted Jesus as your Savior, today is the day of salvation today because we don't know how much longer we have just look how crazy things are look at the level of hate that has permeated our cities and I guess the country too I mostly see it in the cities though look at the level of hate the level of disrespect the level of lies the level of people not even believing in God. The level of blasphemy against God because they don't believe Him. They don't believe in Him. And so they blaspheme Him and His Son and the Holy Spirit in the most <clears throat> horrible ways that if they don't repent, it's going to really be bad for them. We have to have a respect for God. He created everything. I'm sorry, I'm losing my voice. Wow, that's hot. <laughs> he created everything that you see, everything that you don't see, every person that you see. That is a creation from him. We do not have the right to disrespect others. We are called to love people. We are even called to love sinners. We don't have to love their sin because God does not love their sin. But we are called to love people. We are called to love all people. No matter what. No matter what they've done. We are called to have a level of love that comes through having Jesus in our hearts. It's, it's the love of Jesus is what it is. Because on our own, we are not capable. But have you been invited into God's heaven to receive this salvation? Have you been invited to receive salvation through Jesus Christ? because once we're saved heaven is our final destination it's a free gift we can't buy it we can't be good enough so this is God's invitation to his heaven because heaven is not mine it belongs to God he created it so have you ever been invited the time is now to respond to his invitation. Repent and turn to the one true God. Okay, we read all the scriptures. We read Romans 3.10. We read Romans 3.23. We read Romans 5.8. We read Romans 6.23. We read... John 14, 6, we read Romans 10, 9 through 11, and we read Romans 10 through 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that's Romans 10, 13. So back behind me, there's a picture of the New Jerusalem. What John saw what John saw in Revelation. So when John saw the holy city, New Jerusalem,
coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them, and be their God. Revelation 21, 2 through 3. So that's what John saw. What an exciting thing to see. I can't imagine how great that would be to see that. So if you would like to accept salvation at this time, I'm going to read this prayer and I'm going to give time in between so you can repeat after me if you would like. Dear Lord Jesus, I believe that I am a sinner. Please forgive me. I admit. Dear Lord Jesus, I admit that I am a sinner. Please forgive me. I believe that you are God's one and only Son that came to teach, heal, love, and forgive. You died on the cross for all sinners. You rose from the tomb on the third day. You ascended into heaven and you will come back to usher your church into heaven. I confess you as my Savior, inviting you into my heart to live and reign forever. Thank you for the gift of salvation. Please give me strength to withstand the temptations in my life. Help me to praise and glorify you daily. And help me grow in my relationship with you daily through Bible study and prayer. In your precious name, Jesus. I pray. Amen. So if you said that prayer, and, and you meant it sincerely, then welcome to the kingdom family of God. Your name is being written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and the angels are rejoicing. Because in heaven there is rejoicing all the time. There is perfect beauty perfect peace, perfect love, perfect joy all the time, plus things that we don't even know that we can only imagine. So if you want to grow closer to God, then read his word every day. And start in Matthew. Don't start in Genesis. Don't think, I'm going to read the Bible from cover to cover. Do that later. Do that after you learn more about Jesus and who he is, the Savior that you accepted into your heart. So start with Matthew and read the Gospels. Learn about Jesus. Learn about what he did. Learn about the level of love that he has for everyone. And um, pray. Pray to God every day in praise. Find you some praise music and praise God every day. Okay. Well, I think that's all that I came to do tonight. I did scripture. I did more scripture. I did a salvation message. So I think it's time to give you God's blessing. I'm going to bid you good night tonight.
So in Numbers 6, 24 through 26, The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. I wish you all peace. I wish you all joy. I wish you all love. We have got to love one another. We need unity in our country. We need unity in the world. And we need to unify under Jesus. Under the banner of Jesus is where we need to unify. So I am uh, going to pray. I am going to pray. I'm going to pray. Got to do a presentation on Thursday. I probably need to learn, need to practice not as much slang words. That's what I use a lot. All right, well, let's pray. Let us pray. God, we just come to you, and we are so thankful, God. We're so thankful that we have you. We're so thankful that you loved us enough to send Jesus to die for us, God. We're so thankful for salvation, God. We're so thankful for the opportunity, God, to love others through the love of Jesus, to be the hands and feet of Jesus, God. God, we just, we again pray for people that do not know Jesus as their Savior, God. We just pray the Holy Spirit would draw them to Jesus so they can be saved. God, we just pray that you would help us to go out boldly to share your truth and to share the gospel of Jesus every day, God. We just pray that you would uh, be with all of my friends that are sick, God. I have many, and you know who they are. You know who you've laid on my heart. I just pray for healing for them. I pray that you would be with them and that they would feel your presence and that you would be with their families also, God. I just pray for all my friends that you would give them protection and provision and blessings. I pray for their family members, God, the same for them. I pray for my family and my family members, God, that you would protect them, provide for them, and bless them. God, you are so good about blessing us with wonderful people in our lives. God, we just thank you. I pray for our youth. I pray that they would seek you every day through your word, through prayer, and through praise. God, that you would draw them closer and closer to you every day so that their relationship will just get better and better every day. And God, we, we just are in awe of who you are, God. And we are in awe of the Savior that you gave us, God. And we are in awe of the Holy Spirit and how he moves in our lives, God. And how he works in our lives. We are just in awe, God. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, my friends, my pray and share warriors. I hope you have an awesome rest of your evening and an awesome tomorrow. Tomorrow's Wednesday. I have youth, so I won't be here tomorrow night. I will be with the youth. I'll be singing and I'll be teaching and I'll be learning because even as leaders, we are learning all the time. We learn from each other. We learn from the Word. We read something that we haven't read like that before. It's a constant learning. When you're a Christian, you don't ever stop learning. You're constantly learning. God is constantly teaching us things. And I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful. So, much love. And cyber hugs till I see you again. Good night.